Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing some of these podcasts to help you out with some review work uh, for the course. Um, if you need, obviously, to uh, have me repeat something, you can stop the browser and scroll back and replay the message. Uh, so I won't be pausing and repeating myself to save time. Um, what we talked about uh, last class that I think we need to uh, review a little bit is the business plan. Um, remember we talked about why have a business plan and students said that number one it could be used for um, other investors investors in the company someone who'd want to buy something it could be used for partners in the business to really set them straight as to what was going on and it could be useful for the person who is opening the business him or herself because it's always good to have planned everything and have guideposts for what you're doing. And so companies typically have uh, business plans written up to uh, 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 facilitate uh, improving these sorts of things. Um, one thing that you have to keep in mind is that, um, is that um, most uh, people aren't able just to, you know, list their company on the stock market and get a lot of money this way and a lot of banks aren't willing to give money to companies uh, unless they have established track records or very good credit records for the owners or, or that sort of thing it's very difficult to get capital so how do people get capital well one way is to look for very wealthy people um, that might be wanting to diversify their assets and pick up money and an example of this would be the classic angel investor an angel investor is a rich person who looks uh, to uh, invest some of their income, some of their wealth in uh, startups with the hope that, you know, every five startups, let's say, maybe uh, three will close, one will break even, and one will have an absolute amazing run that will uh, make lots of profits and make up for the uh, lost money. So you need to be able to, if you're interested in these sorts of things, you need capital, you may need to make a very good business plan, a good presentation to various local angel investors who could help you start up the business in exchange for a large share of the profit or the equity. Um, and uh, if you watch the show Shark Tank, which I advise all of you again to do on Hulu, um, there are, you can watch any episode. It's a good way to really uh, see how these sorts of people uh, think and how they uh, go about things. So I, I hope you, you, you watch those episodes. I find them quite interesting. You might find them quite interesting. So uh, please do that. So let's talk about what you might want in a business plan. There's no one way to make a business plan. Um, so let's talk about some common things that you might want in a business plan. First thing you're going to want is um, an understanding of uh, what, the, what the whole business plan is about, an executive summary. So you're going to write a, a short summary of, you know, everything that's going to come through because if I'm looking through uh, 50 business plans in a day I don't want to read 20 30 pages in each one I want to read you know a paragraph or two to give just a sense of the of the business and determine that this is something that I'm I'm interested in investing in you know not everyone wants to invest in every industry if you, you know a lot about pharmaceuticals you may not want to invest in computers and, and, and vice versa so the key point here is um, to have a good quick summary about what your 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 uh, plan is going to be about. Once you've done that, you're going to start off with a section about the ownership of your company. Um, who's going to own it? What shares? Uh, how, are, how are investors going to be compensated? Obviously, if I'm an investor, that's something I'm very interested in. Uh, the next thing is you're going to talk about what your company is going to do. You're going to have a section on, you know, the products you're going to offer, the basic service that you're going to be, What what is your reason for being. Um, after that, you're going to talk about the uh, market. You're going to have a summary of the market, uh, competitors, um, what products are offered by competitors, there's price point. Uh, you really want to do a lot of due diligence, a lot of, of good understanding there. You also want to have uh, a good investigation of your own company's products. You know, if I ran a gym, let's say, how much is going to come from memberships? How much do you want to get from personal training? How much do you want to get from selling juice, uh, supplements, whatever it is? You need to look at each line of your business and investigate them fully, and then do and then compare them to the market overall. That's that's a very important idea as well. 
Um, once you've done that, once you've done this market analysis, which is a really huge part of a business plan, uh, you're going to also do a SWOT analysis, right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for your uh, company. Um, you need to have a good understanding of where where you as a business person may be good and where you may be not so good. And that's very important uh, whenever you're going into a business-related thing. Um, so the SWOT analysis is in-depth. We've talked about SWOT analysis before, so I'm not going to uh, talk about that now. Um, another thing you want to have is maybe a web or marketing um, uh, plan about how you're going to market your business, how you're going to do things through the web. And this is very important because I've, a lot of people in the social media discussions have been um, – basically saying, well, you can use social media to make money. You can use social media to generate interest. You can use social media to advertise and market. But the problem is no one really told me how you can do that. It's all very well to talk about uh, these things as being powerful tools, but you have to have a good idea of how to make use of the tools, not just say, well, my business is going to use social media to make money. Give me a coherent plan how you're going to make money. Give me, give me an idea of where I, as, a, as an investor, can visualize you doing this in the future and see how this makes sense and relates to everything. That's a very important uh, point as well. Um, lastly, the really uh, important thing that every business plan is going to have to have is a financial uh, uh, page. And usually, if you were going to make a real serious business plan, you'd, it would be several pages of, of detailed accounts. Um, but for our purposes, uh, you should probably only have about one page. But it's very important to have this. Um, no one is going to open a business or invest in a business or loan money to a business without any sort of projections on cash. Um, those of you who are uh, uh, accounting majors will, will know these things very well, the income statement, the, the balance sheet, uh, cash flow analysis. But uh, for those of you who aren't, uh, let's just talk for a minute briefly about what these things might be. Uh, the most important thing that you're going to look at is is what's called the income statement or a profit and loss statement. That is to say, you're going to take all your revenues from your company over a period of time, let's say a year, and you're going to estimate how much money you're going to take in. And then you're going to also estimate over the year how much money you're going to spend in cost. Um, and hopefully you'll make a profit uh, on the company. So let's, let's take an example. Let's say you're going to run a gym. All right, In your gym, you would have, let's say, two means of making money. Uh, you're going to have memberships and you're going to have personal training. Uh, let's say the memberships are going to cost uh, $25 a month and you have, uh, uh, let's say, 500 members. How, many, how much money are you going to get from the memberships per year? Well, you have 500 members. You have to multiply that by 25 times 12, right? $25 a month for 500 members for 12 months. And uh, if you do that math out, uh, you'll see that you'll have uh, $300 per member a year because it's $25 a month times 12 months is $300. And if you have 500 members, that's going to bring you in $150,000 of revenue projected over the course of a year. Then let's say personal training. Let's say you were able to make charge uh, $50 for an hour of personal training and you were able to sell uh, let's say a hundred of these hours every month uh, you'd make 5,000 a month from personal training 12 months a year that would be 60,000 a year so if we add those two up you can see that the company is making $210,000 of revenue that's not profit that's revenue remember from this revenue we have to subtract our costs and uh, let's now investigate our costs. So the second section of a profit and loss statement is to look at their costs. And there are a lot of costs to doing business. First is rent. Right? If you're going to have a gym, you're going to have to rent a facility. Um, and uh, remember something very important about uh, s commercial real estate is that rents are going to be quoted per square foot per year. So if you see a thing that says rent $20 a square foot, that means for every square foot in the building, you're going to pay that per year. So let's say you had a facility that's 3,000 square feet. And in New York City, the rents are fairly high. So let's say you had a $30 a square foot in rent. You would be paying $90,000 a year in rent on that facility. Let's now figure uh, uh, utilities. 
I don't know exactly what that might be, but let's let's say that that's fifteen thousand dollars a year, just just off the top of my head. What other costs might we have? Insurance, um, processing fees, uh, cleaning, that sort of thing. We'll lump that all together and say that's another ten thousand dollars. So, uh, uh, the only other major cost that we might have is labor and marketing. Uh, but let's assume marketing zero. But let's let's look at lo let's look at la labor. You know, how many people do you have to have working at your facility? Uh, how many personal trainers? How many desk attendants? Uh, that sort of thing. And labor is quite expensive. So I, we could do a very thorough analysis, but I'm just going to throw out just general numbers so you guys can see how these charts work. Let's assume that we're going to spend $80,000 a year on labor costs and no, none on marketing. So we have 80000 in labor, 90000 in rent, so that's 170000 Fifteen thousand on utilities and ten thousand on insurance and other such expenses. So uh, if we add that up, you'll see that your costs are one hundred ninety-five thousand dollars a year. No, wait, I'd say one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars a year. Wait, yes, one hundred ninety-five thousand a year. So even even I have a complicated what I'm speaking. So it's one hundred ninety-five thousand a year, and you are making a revenues of two hundred ten thousand. So your profit that year is what? Your profit would be only. Uh, fifteen thousand dollars in that year. Hopefully, if you're running a business, you'd want to make more money. Um, but this is the sort of reasoning that you'd have to do on any type of business. So when you write a business plan, you need to estimate all your costs and all your revenues. And it's very difficult to estimate revenues. Easy to estimate cost. Very difficult in most businesses to estimate revenues. So when you do this sort of thing, you need to look at you know your best case scenario. And your, 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 what you think you're going to get, which is, say, your standard scenario. And then I would say if you're really confident, you maybe take half of what you're going to get in your standard scenario. And if you can still think that you're going to make money and love this business with half the amount of money that you think you're going to make, then maybe you want to do it. If you're going to be in a business where you have to make your, your best case scenario just to break even, then this is a terrible business because it's unlikely to ever do that. And you should stay away from that because the risk is just too darn high. So if you're doing a business plan for class, um, it's going to be a good idea to maybe give me three years of projected revenues, the first year, a second year, and a third year, and the cost thereupon. So we can estimate a, a cash flow, sort of profit for each year. And once we have profit and the growth and profit every year, we have a good understanding of how to value the company uh, on that basis. And, uh, you know, that's what we're concerned about, profits. That's what investors are concerned about, profits and potential profits in the future. So you have to do this analysis anyway. It's very well to say, I have this great business, but unless you can bring in this hard numbers aspect of things, you're going to have a problem um, with these business plan reports. So um, I think that's that's all I want to speak about business plans, but I think hopefully this has uh, been educational for you and uh, will clear up some of your issues.